Club is back, friends, and we are doing what we do best, talking all things, books, amazing authors and illustrators, and, of course, find out what you've been reading. Now, for this return of Book Club, I thought we would do it in style with not one, not two, but three guests. Well, four, kind of. First off, we've got the author of the Jamie Johnson book series, Dan Friedman, will be joining us. And then we're going to be joined by the Planet Omar book series author and 2021 World Book Day author, Zainab Mian. And we're going to be joined by co-authors and real-life brothers. Did you say real-life brothers? Are Danny and Mick going to be on Book Club? No, not Danny and Mick, Hacker. Our guests are two brothers who are also co-authors and members of the amazing diversity dance troupe. It is Ashley and Jordan Banjo. Hey, what's happening, bro? What's up? Hello, guys. Welcome to Book Club. Um, now, we're very, very excited. Obviously, you are phenomenal dancers, but now great authors of your new book, Fly High Crew, The Green Glow. Read us a little bit of the paragraph. Let's get excited for this book, why don't we? Let's go, let's go, let's go straight in from the opening, ready? From the let's opening. get tip top, ready? Let's go. As soon as the school bell rang, Trey and Jacks raced to their street dance rehearsal. Neither of them suspected that a cataclysmic, life-changing event was just around the corner. Cataclysmic, life-changing events simply didn't happen in a place like this. Oh, listen, I can't lie. Chills are body popping all over my body, but I'm trying to control them. Um, <laughs> beautiful, beautiful use of the word cataclysmic. I am a big fan of that. But now, Trey and Jax, I love the fact that they're always struggling to find some place to rehearse, and they've got to deal with this teacher, Mr. Crankshaw or Mr. Stankshaw. Great way to switch up his name like that. Um, <laughs> this teacher likes to call the police on them when they use the school hall to, you know, practice in, which is totally unnecessary. Did you guys ever find uh, yourself struggling to find places to dance as well when you were with diversity? We knew a few crankshaws in our time. Yeah, a few busybody <laughs> we teachers. We knew a few crankshaws. Let's be honest. I'm sure everyone does. Yeah. We were quite lucky because we actually had a studio, right? We had a studio. That was one of the kind of points of differences with, with the characters. We were almost like, I wonder what it would be like if we were in school and we didn't have mm -hmm. our own studio. Like, how would that look in a world outside of our own? Because we, we believe what we've done and, you know, being in diversity and having a group, all of that is possible for whoever wants to make it happen. So we thought we'd just kind of explore a bit of a different version of mm. the story to our own. Obviously, now from what I'm hearing, dance, going to dance classes, I feel like you're writing from experience here. Um, I don't know, where did the inspiration come for writing this book? I think you might, I think you're right there, dude. Obviously there's definitely some inspirations from our own lives, but you chuck in some epicness, some action, maybe some exaggeration on how skilled we actually are, and you get a very, <laughs> you get a very, very cool book. That's the brilliant thing about writing a book. You can kind of exaggerate what you want, right? Yeah. So it's sort of, yeah. The big question I, I, that we need to know, that everyone at home needs to know for their own safety is, if they do catch their teachers drinking green coffee, what should they do? If you catch your teachers drinking, right, first of all, I hope, I hope Trey learned his lesson in a book. Listen to your little brother. Fair enough, okay? <laughs> That's the first thing. Take advice. You need a bit of teamwork. You need to stick together. Most importantly, run, though. Secondly, I'd say watch and observe. I'm too curious like that. I'd be like, could you imagine if I see a teacher drinking a green coffee, I'd be like, what's going to go on? Worst advice in the I world. I know, I'm sorry. You're going to get invaded by I'm sorry, watch and observe. Ash just wants to do his own, like, David Attenborough now, watching. As you can see, the teacher has <laughs> mutated yeah. and doing weird things. Here we have. Whoa, hold on there, lads. That alarm means only one thing. It's time for the Great Emoji Book Challenge with Zainab Mian. Hello, Zainab. It's great to have you here with us in Book Club to take on a very, very illustrious challenge. It's called the Great Emoji Book Challenge. I will give you free emojis, and you must take those emojis and create an incredible story that moves my soul and brings me to tears, possibly, in a few sentences, all right? Um, are you ready for the emojis, Zainab? All right, Reese, I'm ready, let's go. All right, okay, so your emojis are an alien, the alien emoji, a baby bottle, mm -hmm. and the 100 emoji, you know, the red 100. Go! All right, an alien was sent down to the earth with a challenge of finding 100 baby bottles. So he went around in his spaceship and snatched baby bottles from 100 kids, leaving them absolutely in tears and mums were just throwing their prams at the spaceship and it went down. Stena, <laughs> how do you reach that level of darkness to create a story like that? I am shaken to my core. The last one I've got to ask you, Zayna, can you name that, give it a title? Dawn of the Baby Bottles? I mean, 
<laughs> wow. So, uh, now, my job is I need to rate that with an emoji myself. So I'm trying to think of an emoji. It's definitely got to be the scream emoji of the, the, the hands on the face, like, oh! Because that made me want to do that internally. But, um, wow, Zainab, I, I said bring me to tears and you stepped up. Oh, 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 Zainab, so sorry. Ashley and Jordan back. I've got to go. But thank you again. I am rocked to my core. Now, uh, tell us a bit about uh, the aliens. How did you guys come up with their characters and stuff? What was your process? Me and Ash, for want of a better word, sci-fi, superhero, action-based nerds. That is me and Ash. So to be, to be in a place where we're writing a book, where so the characters have loose inspirations from ourselves, it's kind of fun to put yourself in a scenario where trying to think back, which seems like too long ago when I was a kid, what would have been the coolest but probably scariest thing that could be happening. The alien situation, you know, to have the motive where, in a weird way, trying mm. to do something good, but not the best, not the best way. You know, that, that was kind of the motive. When you're writing stuff, as like myself as a kid watching superhero shows, I'd always be, I'd always be thinking, how would I be in that? So I'd always think of what I could do. So I used to sprint. So I was like, well, I'd I'd be a speedster. So obviously, with you guys, you think, well, mm. I'd spin on my head and kick them away. Easily done. But I, I can't I can't have you on here and and not at least be cheeky and ask, can you teach me just some moves, some arm actions that I can do, tut in something that I could probably just impress some. Oh, yeah. Where did that come from? I thought you were a sprinter, not a dancer. Uh, listen, I've got I've got many, I, I, I dabble. I dabble in a lot of different things. <laughs> I dabble, I dabble, I dabble. Worry, I dabble, worry I dabble. about yourselves, worry about yourselves. Yeah, so go clap. Yep, yep. Clap, yep. Clap, clap. Yep, yep. Punch, punch. Boom. All so right. we're gonna go clap, 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 clap. Boom. Jeez. Woo, something like that. Boom. Uh, all right, right. that's it. Do me a favor. Do, do this, do, and then clap at the end. Right, okay, all right, here we go. Back, 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 back. Boom. Boom. Oh, uh, love the Banjo Brothers. And you know what? I've definitely got the moves. Look at that. Woo! I can so join diversity. What? Not with my laces, though. That's untied. That's very dangerous. Give me a minute. It takes 30 seconds for me to tie them up. I struggle, all right? Ugh. Hi, guys. It's Dan Friedman here. I'm the author of the Jamie Johnson book series. And while Reese is tying up his laces, I've got 30 seconds to tell you my top tips for creating characters. So my first one is use real people the people that you've met in your life, because then you're gonna be confident. You're gonna know how they look and what kind of person they are, although you don't have to stick to exact real life when you're putting them in your story. Secondly, know everything about them. What's their favorite pizza? What's their biggest secret? What's their favorite music? What's their dream in life? And thirdly, listen to them. If your characters start talking to you, then they'll write your story for you. Oh, man, that was a tricky knot. Anyway, whilst I was down there, I came up with a great idea for a new dance move. So basically, I just got to like flick my leg up like and... Sorry guys, that's a doorbell. Let me go quickly see who that is. Hi guys, that was me who rang the doorbell and while Reese is answering it to no one, I've got a bit of time to tell you my top tips on cliffhangers. So cliffhangers are that bit in a story where it stops and leaves you wanting more and makes you want to read on. And my tip for cliffhangers are this. One, if you know the ending of your story, that's going to help you because then you can work your way back and maybe put in five gaps in your story where you're going to cut it and leave the reading wanting more. Secondly, have your character that they desire a goal that is a clear goal that they want to achieve. And just as they get close, that's the time to put in a cliffhanger to really make us want to read on. And thirdly, it's all taste, but I would suggest use cliffhangers during the story rather than at the very end, because we all like to know what's going to happen. It can be a bit frustrating if the cliffhangers at the end. So put them in the beginning and the middle and close to the end, but maybe not the very end. Okay, I better go now. Reese is on his way back. Or is he? Will he trip over his laces? That's how you write a cliffhanger. Whoa, that was, well, that was weird. There was no one at the door. Is someone playing a prank on me? Because if you are, I'm not amused, all right? Pack it in. Why do I feel like you guys know something, something I don't? Like how to rate a great character or a cliffhanger or something? Mm. Anyway, uh, I caught up with Zainab Mian about World Book Day and all to talk about her book, Planet Omar, Operation Kind. I guess I'm just curious, Teddy. I mean, what if I try a bit of meat piss and then I like it and then I try more and more jars and then the Hacker's got nothing left and then what if Hacker is a dog and then he eats me and then I've got nothing left? No, no, wrong clip. Take me to Zainab. 
So your book is called Planet Omar. And firstly, I want to know, where did you get the inspiration for Omar? Well, when I started writing the Planet Omar series, my very own son was nine years old. And he was just super cheeky, always learning himself into trouble accidentally because you know, deep down inside, he's a great kid and he has a really kind heart, just like Omar. Mm. So I wanted to write a character which um, special like him. I can so imagine you like you get called into school one day because he's done something cheeky and you're like, this is great. You give me great stuff. Uh, that's <laughs> brilliant. Uh, now, the thing about Omar as well, as well as being the main character, he's a Muslim character as well, which is so brilliant for young Muslim kids to feel represented. How important do you feel it is to be represented in stories like this? Thank you. I think it's just such a wonderful thing to be able to pick up a book in your classroom or in the mainstream bookstores that you walk into and see a book where there's a character just like you. It makes you, it makes children feel like they belong in the world that they're in, which mm. is incredibly important. Absolutely. And, you know, one of the best ways that we sometimes discover books like that is on World Book Day. So, and you've been named uh, one of the authors for World Book Day. So congrats, because that's brilliant. Uh, can you tell me, what does World Book Day <laughs> means to you? Well, the day is just um, incredible because it gives children the chance to own a book, even if perhaps otherwise they might not have been able to easily. And it's just a day when everyone's celebrating the fun that you can find in reading. It's a day that every kid knows about and remembers. So I think it's just a great way of getting children reading and enjoying that reading time. Hello, I'm Catherine Rundle and I'm the author of Sky Steppers and I love World Book Day because it's two of my favourite things, books and celebrations. I love the idea of a day in which we come together to talk about how books can sweep you away on a wild adventure and change the world. A day of treasuring. That to me seems a truly spectacular thing. So since Omar uh, in your book, Zainab, is quite the troublemaker, we've come up with a quiz for you, okay? So I'm going to give you some fictional troublemakers that we know and love, and we'll give you some clues, and you've got to guess who that troublemaker is. So this quiz is called Writer or Wronger. Oh, and also something to add, Zainab, is if you get them wrong, I get to slime you. What? How? You do know, Reese, that I'm at home. I'm not in the same studio as you, so that's impossible. There's no one here to slime me. Oh, la, 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 I can't hear you. It's time to do the quiz. All right, time for writer or wronger. <laughs> Question one. It's a Shakespeare character. Mischievous fairy replaced Bottom's head with the head of a donkey. Is it A, Romeo, B, Puck, or C, Macbeth? B, Puck. Oh, <laughs> Right, okay. God of mischief, brother of Thor, can control other people's minds. Is it A, Loki, B, nearly headless Nick, or C, danger mouth? I'm so tempted to say the C, but it's A, Loki. Oh, I was gonna say, go for it. You don't know. Correct. All right, for the clean sweep, one of the five to be invited to Willy Wonka's chocolate factory, labeled a bad nut, whiny, stubborn, and spoiled. Is it A, Charlie Bucket, B, Veruca Salt, or C, Violet Beauregard? Uh, I think it's B, Veruca Salt. Oh! Zayn, you absolutely smashed it. Well done, congratulations. You know your troublemakers. I guess no slime for you, you're lucky. But just for suggesting that I should be slimed, I think you should be slimed. So somebody in the studio, slime Reese, please. Wait. Slime uh, him. All right, wait, hey, well, first off, cause of, you know, social distancing, it's not very safe. However, I am a man of my word and I do understand that, yes, I did do that too. I will self-slime myself for the culture and for the entertainment. <sighs> Dip book club. Here we go. Three, two, one. Uh, you see, oh. Reese, I'm not so mean, so I switched the slime for confetti. Thank you. Uh, Zainab, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us and do a bunch of nonsense. And make sure you're checking out Zainab's book, Planet Omar, Operation Kind. I have been through all the emotions today, but thank you to our amazing guests, Zainab Nian, Dan Friedman, and Ashley and Jordan Banjo for joining us on Book Club today. And if you would like to see yourself on Book Club, well, head over to the Book Club page on the CBBC website. Send us a video of your book review, send us a book selfie, or just comment on what books you're loving at the moment. Ooh.